Hello, thank you for watching my channel today. My name is Sarah and my channel is called Your True Shelf. Today I'm filming a tag um, called the Time and Place tag, which was originally created by Jen Campbell and I'll link her channel down below. Um, so I watched Lauren from Lauren and the Books um, film this tag recently. I don't think it's a new tag. But it's basically just talking about 10 books that remind you of a specific time and place when you were reading them. Um, so books that are basically associated with sort of strong memories. So there's no questions or anything, it's just talking about those 10 books. So I thought that was a really lovely thing and I really, really enjoyed watching Lauren's video. So I'll link that in the description box down below as well so you can watch it. Um, it when I was going through my shelves... Um, it was quite, um, there were so many books I could have picked. I tried to pick 10 from like a, across a range of periods of time and also not just ones that when I was on holiday because I think for a lot of books you remember, oh yeah, I was on holiday then when I was reading that one. Um, and I tried to pick ones that weren't just from holidays. So without further ado, um, the first book that I've got is um, one which I shouldn't actually have because it's from my school and I never gave it back. <laughs> Um, but it is um, Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare. This is my school copy and I'm very naughty because I kept it because I loved it so much. So we did this book in year 10 and it's still got like my name written in the front of all the girls who had the book before me. Um, so we did this for GCSE and um, we did like why I loved it so much. I think firstly like Mrs Davidson, my teacher, who taught it to us. I've talked about her before in this video and um, Booktube actually got me back in touch with her which was really lovely. Um, but she taught it so well and also we did... Um, we looked at the two film adaptations, so the Baz Luhrmann um, one and the Zeffirelli one. And we liked it a lot about the sort of the cinematography and the adaptation as well as the book. And I think the films like really brought it to life because when actors say the words, they make them so much more understandable to somebody who, um, you know, who isn't necessarily used to reading Shakespeare and the way that it's written. Um, and I absolutely love this. I can still remember some of my favourite quotes. Just um, I haven't reread it for ages, but I've watched the Baz Luhrmann film so many times because it's one of my favourite films of all time. So this just takes me back to um, being at school in year 10 in Mrs Davidson's class and um, loving learning this book and wanting to read more Shakespeare as a result. So that's my first one. The next book I've got is one that I read um, when I was in sixth form at school. Um, it wasn't anything to do with school, but that was how old I was. And um, I think, well, I know, I first heard about this book because um, it was an Oprah's Book Club choice. And I can remember, like, me and my mum used to watch Oprah on, on TV, like, as much as possible um, when I was in school in sixth form. Um, and we saw this about her book club and I wanted to get this book and it is um, A Fine Balance by Rahinta Mystery and this is a book which um, is on my favourite books of all time list but I've only read it once and I remember it, um, you know, how much of a feeling it evoked in me at the time. Um, but I would like to reread it because I I really should sort of reread my favourites to see if they're still my favourites. But anyhow, um, so this book is set in the um, 1970s when a state of emergency is declared in India, and it follows four people. So there's um, a student, a widow, and two tailors, um, and they all end up living together in a one-room apartment because of the state of emergency and it's about kind of their relationship between them and I just remember being like pretty traumatized by this book because I remember like the um learning about the life of some of the people like who are homeless and disabled and there's no help available for them and things like that um, and I remember there was a scene where a village was burnt down on purpose and how I remember I remember going through to my mum and dad's room and saying like um, I'm too traumatised to sleep by what I've just read so I it's like a really hard read but I just remember it like so fondly and um, I just found like a really important book and um, one that I would definitely read again so that's that one so the next book that I read, I would have been in my um, late 20s, early 30s reading this book and it's one that actually made a really good friend for me. Um, so this book is um, 
one that I know is very beloved by a lot of people um, and it is A Thousand Splendid Sons by Khalid Husseini. So again, this is one of my favourite books of all time and I have reread this one. Um, and this book, I... I don't remember why, I think I got the audio book from the library was the first time that I came across it and the narrator is wonderful. And um, this is a book set in Afghanistan um, and it's set um, in the present day, um, but before, so before and during the sort of 9-11 times. And um, this follows a woman called Mariam who is sent to marry a guy called Rashid, who is quite a bit older than her and very abusive. And it follows Mariam through her life and um, also her um, relationship that forms with um, Lila, who is a the second wife of Rashid. And um, it's just the most wonderful book. I love this book so much. It is just so beautiful. And it is so interesting to learn about Afghanistan as well, especially what it used to be like. Um, and it used to be like a tourist destination and things. Um, and um, this book is very powerful, very moving. I love it. And the reason that it made it onto this list and why it evokes such powerful memories for me is because... Um, so when I was at work, I'd finished reading it. This is the place I used to work at. And um, I saw there was a girl who worked there who I didn't know very well. And she was sitting in the staff room and she pulled this book out of her bag to start reading it. And I was just like, oh my goodness, that book. And then it kind of got us talking about books and I realised that she was a, a prolific reader as well and we talked about this book and now we're like really good friends and it's now, um, let me think, about nearly 10 years later and we're both still really good friends and we both say that it was due to this book that we um, got so friendly with each other. So yes, a, a brilliant, brilliant book but also time and place because of my friendship that it made for me. Um, the next book is one that I read when I was pregnant with Faye and I read it on holiday in Italy and I felt really sick while I was reading it because of my pregnancy. Um, so it does kind of, it is sort of tainted with nausea. But um, this book is um, Flight Behaviour by Barbara Kingsolver. So I took this on holiday with me. I have memories of reading it in Italy in 2013 and... Um, I actually had, I just had a, um, a scan picture um, taken when I was probably like seven or eight weeks pregnant and um, that was what I used as my bookmark so every time I opened it I saw my little scan picture and um, yeah so that's kind of why I chose this book it just reminds me of being pregnant, feeling a bit sick and being on holiday all at the same time. Um, and also craving beans on toast and mashed potato, which they don't do that in Italy. <laughs> so that's another memory of the time. So this book, this is my first Barbara King Solver book. Um, this follows a, a woman called Della Robia, and I just remember that's such an unusual name. She is a young mom who's living in, where is she, the Appalachians in... Um, in Italy, that's because I'm talking about Italy in America. Um, and I remember about this is that she's got young kids. She's quite dissatisfied with her life and with her husband. Her mother-in-law, I remember, was really difficult. There was a difficult relationship there. And it was. it's all about how there are these butterflies. What are they called? Does it say? No. So there are these butterflies which come to the place where... Um, they live and there's there's like thousands of them and it's a, like an environmental event and it attracts sort of um, naturalists and um, scientists and things to the area um, who interact with Della Robia in a way that she hasn't um, had chance to do before and they sort of change her life, her perspective and it also talks about kind of climate change and the community's reaction to the scientists and all that kind of stuff. So I remember really enjoying it and I really should read more, more Barbara Kingsolver and I will because next month's choice for our book club in January is going to be um, the Poisonwood Bible. So that is this one. Um, I'm just going to pick one now from when I was a child. So I have quite a lot of my childhood books um, still with me and I've saved them all for sort of my kids when they're a little bit older. And I remember this book, so it was published in 
1989 and this particular one 1992 so I would have been nine um and I remember we used to have these school book fairs where like trolleys of books would come after school and you could go and look at them and, and buy them and this was one I got from there and this is called Spellhorn by Burley Doherty um I um liked unicorns before it was called like unicorns so when I was at primary school um, I remember there's another girl in our class who liked unicorns as well but it wasn't like everyone's obsessed with unicorns like they are now but this is a book about unicorn and I always loved the cover um and I just it's like a fantasy book so it just says on the back um Laura and Spellhorn the unicorn have to cross the sea of snakes and fight against terrible danger before Laura can return home the Spellhorn the treasured possession of the wild ones has befriended Laura and is only he who can lead them to the safety of their beloved wilderness so um yeah i just remember like loving this book reading it as a kid um the magic of the after school book fairs um and it would just be i don't know how well it stands up in time because i haven't read it since the 1990s but it would be nice to kind of give it to Faye whenever she wants to read it and see if she likes it too so that's that one I have one more from when I was a kid. I could have picked all of the books when I was a kid, but I thought, well, people probably aren't going to like take those as recommendations. This one is one that I think this was the first book I ever, like my first chapter book that I ever had. And I, the thing I remember about this book, so this was published in, so this edition, 1993, so I would have been 10. So it can't have been my first book because the other book I would have been nine. This is the first book I remember in my head buying but obviously it wasn't um and the reason i remember it is because i got a lamp for my bedroom and i was really excited that evening to go and put my lamp on um next to my bed so i could use it to read with um this is why this book stands out in memory and this is the animals of farthing Rib by colin dan um this is still around because i actually saw it when i was in the children's section of waterstones um this week i actually saw this book um, for sale um, and there was a TV series so this cover is a, like a TV series time when I was a kid which I'd really like to see if I was probably on YouTube somewhere but anyway so this is about <coughs> excuse me the animals who live in Farthing Wood um, they're like that's their home and then one day some people come with bulldozers and start like using it as a housing development um, and they have to try and find um, a new life basically um, and go to a nature reserve and um it's about their journey and obviously talks about like environmentalism and stuff it's quite small writing actually um there are some pictures but it's quite small and it's quite long actually i guess for a kid's book so it's 300 pages so yeah i suppose being 10 would have been about right for that but um that just gives me those cozy childhood vibes and my first reading lamp <laughs> um <coughs> excuse me so the next book that i've chosen i was probably in my mid-twenties and I can remember being off work on annual leave um I was working in the hospital then and um I can just remember I didn't have kids by then and I was lying in the garden on a sun lounger it was beautiful weather and I was reading this book um just pretty much like as much time as I could all day and I absolutely love this book and this one made it onto my favourites of all time list as well um, and this is The Time Traveller's Wife by Audrey Niffenegger. So it's probably a book that lots of people have read already as it's like a very famous book. It's on, it's very beloved by lots of people. Um, and it's basically the story of Claire and Henry. So um, Henry is a time traveller. And I do remember it being a bit hard to get my head around which Henry that we were um, seeing. But Henry basically like, he um, he will just suddenly disappear from where he is and he'll go to a time in the past or the future where he'll appear I, from memory I think he has no clothes on when he appears and he'll just people will either like he'll know them and they won't know him because they haven't met him yet or um he'll see them in circumstances that he wasn't expecting and things and then so Claire um is is his wife which well, is going to be his wife hence the time traveler's wife um, but she's marrying someone who is um, time traveling is really hard because she doesn't know like which Henry she's going to get all the time and stuff. But I'd love to reread this. The film wasn't that great, but I love Rachel McAdams. She's in the film. But there is, I believe, a new version of this coming out, a new adaptation. 
But anyhow, um, yeah, this is a wonderful book, so I'd highly recommend that one. Um, the next book I've got is one that my dad chose for me, and I think this is the only book my dad's ever chosen for me. And um, I think it was like at Christmas time, and I'd asked for a book, and I think my mum had probably dispatched him to go and look for a book for me. <laughs> and um, which doesn't, which is weird because I look, my mum wouldn't normally do that; she'd normally do it herself. But anyway. And he came home, obviously, with this book. And um, if you look at the cover, you wouldn't think it was a great book, but it was a great book. And I am reminded, if you can hear bells ringing, it's my cat. He's just coming. Um, I, when I read this book, I was doing a job in the hospital that I really didn't enjoy, and it made me pretty miserable. And I can remember reading this book at the time, and it was just the kind of comfort and lovely read that I needed at that time. And um, I can remember specifically, like, it, was, it wasn't it was a very busy job, and that was one of the reasons I didn't like it, because I was bored. And I can remember being ward cover um, for one, like, so you had this um, ward covers basically where the day team have gone home, but you're not on nights, you've done your day shift, but you have to stay till the night team start. Um, to kind of cover any things that come up on the ward. So I think you have to stay till about 10. Um, so it's like, a, and you have to do it every other day for two weeks. So you're kind of there from nine in the morning till 10 at night every other day for two weeks. Um, and I just remember being quite fed up. And I can remember sitting in the staff room when I had some breaks and um, reading this book and it being really lovely. And I've talked about it for ages, so I just need to tell you what it is. But this book is one, like I say, you'd look at the cover and you'd walk past it in the supermarket, but it's really good. This is called Chocolate Girls by Annie Murray. And this is about um, some young women. So the main character is called Edie. And she gets married quite young because she's not very happy at home. And she has a baby and the um, baby dies, or yeah, um, when she's only 19. And um, her husband is killed in World War II. So that's when it's set and then she has um there's a baby which gets abandoned um where does it get abandoned I don't know during the bombing in Birmingham and she takes the baby into her care and decides to raise him as her own and it's about kind of the consequences of that and also it focuses on her best friend and her her marriage and things and like I say it's set on the background of World War Two. and the reason it's called Chocolate Girls is because they work at the Cadbury's factory um, and it's really interesting actually because the, Cadbury, the Cadbury's factory did a lot for people sort of helping them with make get you know get on their way in the world and like help them with um, their place to live and education and different stuff like that and I didn't realise like that was kind of part of what the Cadbury's factory used to do um, so it's interesting just hearing about that as well but this book was like a really lovely book and I have got one more by Annie Murray that I found in a charity shop that I bought because I like this book so much. So thanks dad. <laughs> and then the last two I have. So one of them I would have been about how old? Um, so I read it, I've written in the front, I read it in 2012 so I would have been 29 and I was on holiday in Marbella and we were lucky enough to be staying in a friend's um, holiday home and we'd gone in a time of year I think it was like um well January I've written it in the book it was January and so it wasn't summer so I can remember it was like warm it was about 18 or something degrees and it was really sort of a rainy one day and I can remember that everyone had gone out and I just didn't really fancy going out so I just remember sitting out on the balcony with it kind of undercover with this sort of rain and things just sitting outside reading this book getting completely immersed in it all week and absolutely loving this book um and it is Cold Mountain by Charles Fraser so I had seen the film adaptation again this is the movie cover like tie-in cover um which is a bit of a rubbish cover actually <laughs> it would be nice to have a nice edition of this book so okay so basically let me just remember the characters names so there's a soldier in the civil war called Inman and he leaves the battlefield and re tries to return home to Cold Mountain um to Ada who's the woman that he loved before the war began and Ada is um basically um struggling to um make a living um, doing sort of the farm work because um, she's obviously doing it on her own and then I remember there's a woman called I think Ruby who is Renee Zellweger um, who um, is a neighbour and Ada and Ruby kind of partner up and sort of start running things themselves together um, and it's just like 
I loved this. The writing was so beautiful and the sense of place. And it's a very slow book. Like, there's not a lot of plot in here. Um, it's quite dense, the writing. Um, but, I like... I just remember like loving this and just really picturing the scenery and the atmosphere and the feelings of the characters and loving Ruby as well because she's such a such a character. Um, so yeah, this made it onto my favourite books of all time list as well. And then the very last one that I have is a book which I really loved. Um, and it's one that I bought in hardback and it sat on my shelves for quite a long time. And I remember, so Faye was about three and we just had to move her into her own room because Guy was going to arrive soon and um, Guy needed to have the nursery. So Faye was moving into her, into her big girl bedroom and I decorated it for her and everything. And she was um, gone into a bed for the first time and she just didn't really like it. She just felt like she was like unsettled by being in a new room and being on her well she's always on her own in her room because well since she was out of our room I mean but she didn't like being on her own in a new room and she used to say like mum can you can you read your book and sit with me while I fall asleep and the the room that she was in was the room with all my books in and she I said to her like pick me pick me my next book and this is the book that she picked so I can remember sitting like in a sort of a rocking chair like near her bed reading this book every night while I was waiting for her to fall asleep and the book is um Under a Pole Star by Steph Penny so this is a book which is a um a book set in the arctic now when is it so 1889 so there's a woman called um, Flora Mackey and she is the daughter of a whaler and she ends up sort of falling in love with the Arctic Circle and wanting to be an explorer but it's like a really difficult for her as a woman to do this in this period of time. And then there's another man called Jacob Debain who is um, an explorer and they're all sort of trying to map out the Arctic Circle first. So there's like this kind of race to um, discovering new new lands and things. Um, and um, basically, Flora and Jacob's paths cross and they have like ambition and everything and they're kind of rivals, but they also form a relationship together. I'm not going to tell you what kind of relationship, but... Um, there's, it's a, it's a really lovely, like emotionally, um, intense and beautiful surroundings and, um, like a good character study with some, um, romance and stuff in there and, um, loved it, really loved it. And, um, I'd really like to read this again actually as well. So I haven't actually got any other books by Steph Penny, so I should look into that. So that is my memories of the time and the place where I read those 10 books um I could have easily picked another 10 but obviously that would have been too long so I might do this Lauren has done this twice I might do this again in a few years time but anyhow so yeah if you um, would like to do this tag consider yourselves tagged thank you to Jen for making the original tag and thank you to Lauren for inspiring me to do the tag if you have any thoughts on those books or any books that particularly evoke a sense of time and place that you want to tell me about, then please do so in the comments down below and I'll speak to you all soon. Bye!